For each of these, we want to find the domain. We're going to do that algebraically. The range we're not going to worry about doing algebraically because you usually need a graph to see what the uh, the range is going to be. So we're going to do domain only on these algebraically. We want to write our answer in interval notation. So the definition for domain is it's all the x values that make a function define. So what do we mean by define? Define means that we're not dividing by zero and we're not taking the square root of a negative number. So when you look at these, if there's any number that causes division by zero or a square root of a negative number, that number cannot be allowed in your domain. So when we look at the first example, y equals 2x minus 5, for this, there's no chance of us dividing by zero because there's no fraction there and there's no chance of us taking the square root of a negative number. So because neither one of those are in there, that means that any number is okay. My answer will be negative infinity to positive infinity. I can use any numbers that I want on this one. Next, I have y equals one over two x minus five. Now this, there's a chance that the bottom could be equal to zero because I have a fraction going on there. I, I do not want the bottom to be equal to zero. So therefore, to what you would set up is you're gonna do this. You're gonna say that two x minus five is not equal to zero. So I'm gonna solve this. I get two x is not equal to five and x is not equal to five halves. So this is saying that any number is okay except for five halves. If I put five halves in here, it's gonna cause me to get a zero. So that number is not allowed in my domain. When I write the answer, basically I'm gonna include all the numbers before five halves and all the numbers after five halves. So negative infinity to five halves and then from five halves to infinity. That would be the correct interval notation for this. It's basically including all the numbers except for five halves and that's why you need a parenthesis there on that one. For part C, we have a square root. Now the square root you're not allowed to have any negative numbers inside the square root. It's okay to include the zero because square root of zero is zero, so that's okay. I'm just not allowed to have any negatives. What you do is whatever's inside the square root, you're going to take that and you're gonna set it to be greater than or equal to zero. That's the numbers that are allowed inside a square root. Either positive numbers or zero is okay. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna solve that, and that's gonna tell me what numbers are allowed in this one. So if I add five to both sides and then divide by two, I get that x is greater than or equal to five halves. So the way I write that with interval notation is because I have an equal sign underneath it, I'm gonna be including a bracket there with the five halves. So I have a bracket with the five halves, that's gonna to go to positive infinity. Again, infinity is always gonna have, infinity and negative infinity will always have parentheses on them, and this is the only one that has a bracket. So uh, from five halves all the way up to infinity. Part D, y equals one over the square root of two x minus five. So in part C, we had just the regular square root and it was not part of a fraction at all. Okay, now this one, we have a square root that's on the bottom of the fraction. So still, we're not allowed to have any square roots of negative numbers, but also we're not allowed to divide by zero either. So this one actually has two different things happening at once. So what you're gonna do is you're still gonna do an inequality. However, instead of doing greater than or equal to zero, we're gonna do greater than only. The reason why is because if I have an equal sign underneath it, that means that I am allowed to have it equal to zero, but I don't want that. I don't wanna divide by zero. So in this case, I'm including positive numbers only because that square, I can't take the square root of a negative number, but also, I want to guarantee that I don't get a zero down there either, and that's why I don't have the equal sign underneath it. So I'm going to uh, add five to both sides and divide by two, and I get that x is greater than five halves. So it's almost the same as the previous answer for part C. However, I need to put a parenthesis on there. So five halves this time is not included, but anything above five halves all the way up to infinity, that would be allowed, it would be okay in this one. For part E, I have a cube root this time. Now, the previous example, whenever you have, this was a square root and I had to use an inequality. Now, in fact, anytime you have an even root of something like a fourth root or a sixth root or eighth root, you need to use the uh, inequality symbol on that one. However, if you have an odd root, 
it's okay to take the odd root of a negative number. If you think of the cube root of negative 8, that would be negative 2, so that's allowed. So in this case, negative numbers would be okay. However, you're still not allowed to divide by 0. So because of that, the x minus 3, all you're going to do is you're going to set that to be not equal to 0, and you get that x is not equal to 3. All the other numbers are okay. It's just that you can't include uh, 3. So you're going to do all the numbers before 3, and you're going to do all the numbers uh, after 3, so 3 to infinity. That would be your solution set, your answer on that one. Everything before after is okay, 3 is no good. Now this one, x squared plus sine, we're going back to a fraction again. We don't have any radicals or square roots to deal with. So in this case, we're just going to make sure that the bottom is not allowed to be 0. So if I set this up, I have x squared plus 9 is not allowed to be 0. I get x squared is not allowed to be negative 9. And if I square root both sides, you get that x is not equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now, this is not a real number. The square root of negative 9 is an imaginary number, which means this is telling us that there's no real number that will make this equation correct. So in other words, it's saying that x cannot be equal to an imaginary number. Well, it's not. So what that's saying is that if there's no, that means the bottom, it's never able to equal zero. You can't actually solve that. So because of that, there's no number that will allow me to end up dividing by zero. So because of that reason, I can say that I can include any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Any number in here is going to work because I don't have any restriction with that. So you might be thinking, well, what about negative three? Okay, well, negative 3 squared is going to give you positive 9 plus 9, that's 1 over 18. And if you use a uh, positive 3 in there, you get the same answer. So therefore, there's no number that's going to make the bottom equal to 0. So therefore, you can include numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Part G, y equals 1 over x squared minus 9. Now last time I had x squared plus 9, and now we have x squared minus 9. Okay, well now, once again, whatever you have in the bottom, that's not allowed to be equal to 0. So let's try and solve this one. This says that x squared is not equal to 9, square root both sides. That says that x, minus nine, or, uh, x is not equal to plus or minus 3. So that means if I put either 3 or negative 3 in there, I'm going to get a 0. So therefore, I'm not allowed to include either 3 or negative 3. So here's how you'll write that with the interval notation. Everything before the negative 3 is okay. Everything between negative 3 and 3 is okay. And then the last one is going to be from 3 to infinity. So before negative 3 is okay, between negative 3 and 3 is okay, and after 3 is okay. I'm just not allowed to include 3 and negative 3, and this is what your interval notation would look like. Now the last one I have here, the square root of x minus 3 over x minus 6. I have two different things happening. So I have a possibility of the square root of a negative number, and I also have the possibility of dividing by 0 as well. So in this case, I need to take care of both of these separately. So the square root I have there, so when we deal with square roots, we have to set up an inequality. So I know I'm going to have x minus 3, and I'm going to have an inequality, and then I'll have a 0 over here. So the question is, is that going to be a greater than, or, if it's, or is it going to be a greater than or equal to? Well, that depends on where the square root actually is. If the square root is on the top of a fraction, or if there is no fraction at all, then we're going to use greater than or equal to. If the radical is on the bottom of the fraction, that means that we do not want to include the equals on that. But in this case, it's on the top of the fraction, so that's why we are using the equal sign underneath there. So that takes care of that part. I get that x has got to be greater than or equal to 3. Now let's take care of the other one. Now the other one, x minus 6, that's not allowed to be equal to 0. So when I solve that, I get that x is not equal to, x cannot be equal to 6. When I write my interval notation, I need to actually include both of these together. This one, it might actually help to draw a number line to see visually what's happening. Now 3, that would be right here, that's a closed in circle over there, and at 6, I would have an open circle because at that place I'm not allowed 
that number is not allowed there, so open circle. So my interval is actually going to, my number line means it's going to go this direction, and it's going to go to the right, so it means that I, I can include between 3 and 6 is okay, and also from 6 to infinity is okay. So when I write this as an interval, I want to put both those together, so therefore the 3 is a closed circle, that's going to be a bracket that's included here because there's an equal sign. That's going to go to 6, that'll be a parenthesis, and then I'm going to go from 6 to infinity. So it's saying that everything from 3 to infinity is okay, except that I'm not allowed to include the 6. So this would be your completed answer for that one.